Hey everybody! Happy Saturday to you! Hey sweetie, I saw that you logged on. Can you tell I love me some Fred this morning or today, this afternoon? What's going on everybody? What's up Shonda? Happy Saturday everybody! I am going to share some personal things on a walk that I had as far as when I said I'm going to rededicate my life to Christ. I'm going to talk about that. So of course I want you to please invite, share with your followers, your friends, and let's kind of have a little conversation, okay? And this is going to kind of start off a little bit from our love lab that we were at last week. Hey, what's honey? That's my future daughter. What's going on? Hello? Okay, don't forget, I know it's been a minute. We had we weren't on last week. So of course, I need you to invite some people for me, okay? Yeah. I love you much. Thank you so much for consistently supporting, following, loving on us, praying for us. I really, really appreciate that. So what I want to do is I am going to get started on some things because I definitely don't want to um, run out of time because again, it's just going to be a little bit of um, exposure on some things that I walked through. Hey, 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 sweetie, I love you more, love you more, miss you too. Again, welcome to the Sigler series. My name is Coretta and also uh, my husband normally joins me, Roland, but he is actually in New York. Um, he actually had to officiate a wedding for a childhood friend. Wonderful, wonderful understanding. It was absolutely beautiful. We miss you. Love you so much, sweetie. And I am asking each of you, join, join, join. Invite, invite, invite. Share, share, share. Because I am going to share some things and I want you to have some little input, okay? So give me some hearts if it's something that um, it's relatable to you, something that you can relate to, something that you've experienced, okay? So first, let me just say this. Okay, last week, we did not get an opportunity to do any of our broadcasts. Why? Because as you can see, see my shirt? Okay, it's called the Love Lab. And this is going to be a little bit of topic on what we're going to talk about um, today, which is on love. But the Love Lab, we, my husband and I have been afforded the opportunity through Pastors Sherry and, By and Byron Coleman to actually be speakers for the past I think what four years now and when I tell you it has been a complete tremendous blessing for us because you're thinking that you're pouring into other people's relationships but honey by the first thing is you're always the first partaker of anything that you're going to give and be able to speak on so what I'm telling you is that while, while we were actually helping and pouring into others we Roland and I were actually getting blessed and taking off some nuggets ourselves okay so out of it, the Love Lab is normally held every July. Hey, sissy, that's my big sis. Every July, toward the end of the July, if you are engaged, if you are married, whether you're married one year, two year, three years, 30 years, it doesn't matter. When I tell you this conference is the bum.com, do you understand? It gives you such an enlightenment because you can actually take it for granted in the relationships it exposes so much is so down to earth it's not your typical type of marriage retreats trust me i've been to those i've been to the marriage retreats where it's like oh my god you're gonna lock me in a cabin with him and we're barely even talking or whatever and I'm, we're supposed to get along and do it on our own no and nobody was really actually giving us some really tangible tools something that we could actually take home and apply and how to be able to work through communication, how to be able to work through frustrations, how to be able to work through um, trust issues, all of that. So when I'm telling you this love lab, I'm telling you, just Google it. I'm trying to tell you it will bless your life. You need to get to Dallas next July. I'm telling you, I think right now they have a special that's going on that you can be able to sign up. You're talking about two people, $150. Come on, really seriously? I mean, I've gone out to dinner. Come on now. I know you can invest in your relationship. So that's my plug-in. Only reason why, not because of the fact that we are speakers at it, but only because of the fact it's true help. It will help you, okay? So when we talk about relationships, you it's easy to talk about relationships in marriage, 
But what about the relationships that you will have with your friends? What about relationships that you will have, number one, with God? We always want to be able to work on those relationships that we have laterally, but we never really focus heavily on the relationship and the communication that we have with our Heavenly Father. This vertical relationship, you know, we always talk about this horizontal and get along with that, but when are we ever going to be put on the carpet and to say, you know what, what's kind of going on with my relationship with God? Have you ever asked yourself that? Come on, talk back to me, type back to me. I'm serious. I want to know. Do you ever ask yourself, what's kind of going on in my relationship with God? Do I ever put that on check ever? Uh, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Absolutely. And that's where I was. And the reason why I'm, I'm wanting to talk about this today, because just coming off of the Love Lab, when I was having a conversation with one of the attendees about communication. Why, are, why is it that our communication, we'll say, oh, communication is so important, but we're really not honest. We're really not honest in communication. Just because we're talking, does it mean that we're really saying the truth? Is it really that we're sharing our heart? Are we really sharing what's really going on, why we can't be open, where our fears are? Those are the things that, I, when we talk about communication, that's what I wanted to be able to ask about. I wanted to be able to know that regarding my Heavenly Father. That itself was something that was intriguing to me. So when I tell people that I was a PK's kid, and they were like, you know, also you've been saved like since almost birth. Well, no. Um, of course, I was baptized at the age of seven. But the thing that I did, of course, my parents set the foundation. They did. They set the foundation. I went to church. I went to Bible school. I went to Sunday school. I went to BTU. I, communion service. You name it. I was there. We were there all the time. But the one thing that was different for me, and not until actually when we relocated to Tinker Air Force Base, I was 21 years old and uh, we were attending the gospel service there. That's where I honestly realized I don't really know him like I should. You know what I'm saying? And I guess you say, what are you talking about as far as the relationship? What I mean is that I didn't know what it was to really have a relationship. What I knew was fear. I knew the whole lot of do's and don'ts. Don't do this. Don't do that. You can't do this. You're going to hell. And if anything, I had a fear of God, but I didn't have a relationship of God. And if, and if you don't have a relationship, then clearly I can't really know him, right? So in order for me to have a relationship with Roland, I have to get to know him. I can't just be, be afraid of him. And we never talk. He never shares his, I never know his heart. I never share my heart with him. I'm never open. So really that's not a communication. That's not a really a full communication. That's not a full relationship. So if anything, what my relationship with God, it was initially brought out of fear. And that wasn't something that I wanted. That wasn't something I fully understood. All I heard honestly was a whole lot of you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. And so that didn't seem real cool for me. So if anything, at that point, I was at this point saying, you know what, when I get old enough or when I go to college, I am so churched out, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, whatever I want to do it, how I want to do it, whatever. Because I felt bound. I felt like I was just so constrained that I really couldn't have, I didn't know my personality, I didn't understand this whole relationship thing, which no one ever talked about relationship. Now, maybe it was because of the age time that when I was younger, but no one really talked about relationship. They just talked about what you couldn't do and the constraints. Did anybody have that growing up? Or even as far as a young adult, was it just everything you heard was just what you couldn't do as far as relationship? Well, I wanted to be able to kind of give you an understanding. When I realized that God really loved me, which is why I put on there, I want some unconditional love. That's what I want. And I know you would want that too. And I didn't realize that's what I had and didn't even realize what unconditional love was. All I knew, honestly, it was legalism. I knew legalistic. Something was so legalistic as far as, no, I'm not talking about where you have standards. That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about where you have certain traditions. But when, when you are so legalistic, when it feels like you're bound by law, if anything, that kills you. That doesn't bring life. Legalism sucks the life out of you. 
Have you ever been in a church service that things are so legalistic that the fact that you can't even feel or sense the spirit of the Lord in the service or the fact that you feel as though there's no freedom there? Do you, you understand what I'm saying? When there is, when it doesn't feel like it's so closed and so locked down, that's very legalistic. It's like it's doing it man's way. It's very humanistic. It's like you're putting all the human behaviors behind it, but yet still there's no love in it. Whenever you're in a relationship, you have to be able to understand that there is grace. You have to understand that there is the only way that you can have grace is that there has to be love wrapped in it. Does that make sense? In order for you to be able to understand grace, you have to be able to understand that there's love wrapped around it. And that's what I did not have. I felt like all I was receiving was something where I was being beat down, that I had to conform. I had to conform. That felt like more like a, a slavery type mentality. But again, this is how I felt. So I wanted to be able to understand, is this really the Heavenly Father? Is this really the God that I'm serving? Who is he really? Well, that was the thing. It says holiness brings life. It brings peace. It gives grace. Grace equals to love. So this is how you check it. Am I am under something that's legalistic because it takes the life out of you? And it conforms to a man, a man's view. So let me tell you, if you ask yourself, well, am I legalistic or am I living under grace? Well, let me help you. When you're under a, uh, being legalistic or being under a, a constraint where it feels tight and where it doesn't feel as though you're able to have balance, you know what you end up being? Critical. You're criticizing or being judgmental. Do you find yourself being judgmental at all towards people? That's legalism. That's not grace. Because when you have grace, you're gracious. You're more willing to be forgiven and you're more willing to forgive. So that should ask you, you should ask yourself, should I say, do I walk on this earth, on my job, in my home with grace? Or, I'm a, or am I walking around in a legalistic area to the point where all I can do is criticize or judge? Hmm. See, that's what I felt in certain, when I was growing up in a certain church. I, I felt that way. I felt like it was always where you can't do this. You're going to go to hell. All right, but I never heard about him loving me. I never heard about forgiveness. I never heard about that he, he's created me wonderfully. And I, I, didn't under, I didn't hear any of those things. All those things that God is, when you say God is love, I didn't feel that. Right? So how can you say that you, we live up under grace or you're walking in grace? And you're walking in peace. Because if you're walking in happiness, then that means that you're walking in grace. That means you're walking in peace. That means you're walking in a, on a point of understanding. So if we would actually back up a little bit and just say, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the grace that God has given me. Because I know that I'm not right. It is unmerited favor. Because a lot of things, how many things that God has blessed you with, you know you didn't deserve it. You know you didn't. And you're almost to the point, you're like, Lord, please don't, don't, don't expose me. Please, I don't want to be found out. All of that. Has that ever happened to you? Because a lot of times we, we think that we have to earn it, that we can earn it. You can't earn God's love. You can't earn it. You feel like it's all in your acts. Like if I do this, then he'll love me more. If I say this, if I do more, if I'm running here and there and doing all that. But if your heart is not in it, if love is not in it, it's not good for him. He, you're not serving. You're not pleasing him. If it's not done in love, if it's not done as far as in charity, charity is love. It's, it's, it stinks to God's nostrils. It doesn't please him. It doesn't. So don't, I don't, the reason for this scope is talking about relationships. We just came off the weekend about relationships and whether it's courtship, whether it's engagement or in marriage. We just came across, we just came out of that last week and it was an excellent time. But the one thing about it is that you can't do the marriage thing. You can't do the engagement thing unless you really have an understanding and a full grasp of a relationship and love of Christ. That's just what it is. It's just basically, you know, because you cannot fathomly say you're going to do a covenant that is God ordained 
but you're going to leave God out of it. But then if you don't even know how to even have a relationship with God, so how are you going to do this marriage thing? How are you going to do the relationship thing? How are you really going to do that? So I wanted to be able to ask you, have you ever asked yourself, do I walk in grace? Do I give grace to others? Do I do that? And what we want to be able to do is say, you know what, God, I'm always asking and for things, whether it's a job, whether it's my health, whether it's peace in my home, myth, uh, comfort from mental anguish, all of those types of things. But yet still I'm asking, but what have I done? What have I done to be able to give that to others? What really have I done to be able to lend that same thing to anyone else? He says, you can do it. It's very, very easy. What we need to do at this point is start asking ourselves, God, I want to have a better relationship with you. I want to be able to be closer to you. I want to be able to commune with you. You hear all those biblical words. I'm like, I want to commune with you. I remember when I used to say, what does commune mean? What does all of this, all these biblical terms or these Bible or churchy words? What is all of that? Communing is really spending time. Taking time where you are not doing all the talking and allow God to speak to you. You know, and I'm not saying that it's going to be just audibly where you hear this voice, because I promise you, you will probably run. But what it is, is that there's a strong impression, this strong feeling that you hear on the inside. You know, when we talk about that unctioning, that feeling, that's what that is. Because if you are honestly obedient and you're led by God, you will hear his voice. You'll be led by him because also you have to understand even when we're doing wrong, he's not going to sit there and, and just let you go buck wild. No, he chases those he loves. Do you understand? He chases those. He does. He does. But he doesn't condemn. Now, when it comes to condemnation, that's not God. God does not condemn you because, again, he's love. He is love. He is not going to sit there and allow you to be able to feel condemned where you don't have access to him. He says, I'm always here. I've never left you. I never did. He says, yes, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. And that's where we start talking about the legalistic, where you start to have so much fear that you feel as though you make a mistake and you run away from God. Then you no longer feel like, okay, I don't need to go to church. Let me clean myself up first before going to church. Let me do this right before going in. No, he says, that's where that whole song, Come As You Are. The thing is, he just wants you. He just wants your humble heart. He wants your spirit. He just your, wants your willingness to accept him because he's accepting you. It's real simple. That's what we call is a relationship with God. That's a relationship. I wanted to be able to talk to you about the relationship because I didn't want to go a moment longer and have you... Back, you know, just back and forth wondering like, am I supposed to really be fearful of God? Fearful of the fact of, your, of his love, understanding that I want to please him, I want to honor him, that fear of admonition, admiring him, but fearing as though he is coming down with this wrath all the time. He says, I'm a God of love, I'm a God of peace, I'm a God of holiness. He said, because of my standards, there are standards that you need to be able to do because you are held a, uh, to a higher standard. You are held to a, a higher accountability. You are. You are an entitled child. Let me just help you. I know I say a lot of times, my kids while they're here, I'm thinking they are so darn entitled that they act like they, they can't ever get the word no. So you are an entitled child of God. But you will sometimes get the word no from God sometimes. No, you're not going to do this sometimes. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. What he's saying, he's saying no for now. Or he's saying not right now. Or he has something better from you. Sometimes we think a little bit less than what God even wants for us. We, we, we really do. God wants much greater. But he wants us to be able to understand, to know him. So take a moment. Take some time this evening, please do. Take some time this evening and go into, go into the word. Take one scripture and ask God to be reveal himself to you. Ask him to do that for you. Ask him about a question or something that you've had a concern about. Because he is sitting there right there beside you and wanting you to be able to talk to him. Wanting you to actually give every care, every concern, every problem to him. 
Now, is it just only the problem? He wants to be able to be honored. Let him know, just tell him thank you sometimes. Can you do that? Honor him in that. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Can you just thank him? Love on him. Love on him. Bless him. Because he wants to be able to talk to you about some things, about your future. He wants to talk about some things about what you're doing right now. He's trying to give you some new ideas. He's trying to give you some new concepts. He really is. But you haven't taken the time to commune with him. What about your relationship with God? That's what I want to know. Take some time. Take a moment and just ask him. Can I please speak with my Heavenly Father? I would love to be able to have a relationship with you because I know that you love me. I know that you love me. I know that you're not a God that is sitting down just wrapped in fire stone, brimstone. This is what I need from you. He said, I just need your time. I need your heart. I need your willingness. If anything, I want you to walk in the grace that I've given you. I want you to give that grace to others. Don't be so hard on everybody. Back up. Be a little easy on somebody. Because I feel as though you're being too hard on somebody. And God says, I'm not that way with you. Okay? I'm not that way with you. I love you. I want you to have a blessed, 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 blessed Saturday. I just wanted to be able to share just a small nugget on what I know that God had given to me. To be able to walk in grace. Walk in love. Don't walk and feel as though you're in a legalistic mentality. Because you're not. You're in a relationship with him. Love on him for me, okay? I am serious. He would love to be able to hug on you. Love you much. Mwah!